and I think in, in Rick's point there is this idea of people looking past a, a slowdown that might be coming or, or, or trying to, to, they're still afraid they're going to miss out on gains here. I mean, what would you say to that? Look, I think there's a little bit of hope in that conjecture. Uh, I think if you look back at historical cycles, you know, the typical post-crisis environment uh, that's been associated with sustainable returns in equity markets has been one where monetary policy has already moved from restrictive to accommodative and the yield curve has shifted positive or unemployment rates have shifted from being below average to being above average. We haven't even seen negative payrolls at this point in time. So I think there's a lot of things that can happen that can weigh on sentiment negatively uh, between now and when, uh, you know, one would feel comfortable saying um, the worst is behind us. Having said that, uh, I agree with Rick that, you know, the ability to time these things with a scientific precision is somewhat spurious. And so I think our approach is to have a range of different investments uh, that can be resilient in different states of the world and to have some potential ballast. You know, we, we have some cash uh, yielding better than it was, um, but we also have a potential hedge in gold. And I think, you know, one of the things that can happen in the state of the world that Rick is talking about is if um, Treasury yields go a lot lower from these levels, one has to ask the question of what the equilibrium value of the dollar will be in that state of the world. It's benefited so much from the carry trade, despite uh, negative current account fundamentals and despite a longer term fiscal outlook that has a lot of question marks attached to it. Yeah. So you think it's going lower? I think over the medium term, uh, there is downside uh, skew risk uh, to the dollar. And, right. uh, and, and I think that's something that uh, investors need to think about when they construct a portfolio that uh, some amount of international diversification may be prudent yeah. uh, against that backdrop. And, and you have uh, FEMSA, Schindler, Fanuc. I mean, a couple of different names here. As I mentioned, these aren't just U.S. plays, and a lot of people have been thinking through that uh, angle as well. Guys, we have to leave it there. Thank you for your time today. It's great to see you both.